This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia with last year's winner of the Tattersalls Cup, Paul Clitheroe. How are you doing? Really good, thank you very much. Excellent. Nice to see you here. Last time I interviewed you was in the airport straight after you'd basically come out of Customs House for celebrating. I'm not quite sure what I said then. Do you remember? Um, <laughs> Oh, 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 no. <laughs> we were pretty excited, as you know. Yeah. We, it was just really exciting for a, you know, for a group of people I've sailed with for a long time, um, you know, a group of people who aren't paid to sail. You know, we're not bad amateurs, but you know, it was, you know, it was a really, we were really honoured, actually. It was fantastic. And so we did have a few too many rums. You had a lot of rums, and we were discussing how you were the only team that went to Hobart without matching uniforms. But look at you now. Oh, yeah. You've upgraded. Well, I hate, I, hate, I hate to tell you this. About eight of us have upgraded. Oh, no. And so we're, you know, we're still going to look like, going to Hobart on the start line. As always, we'll look like Steptoe and Son. <laughs> oh, we love it. But that's why so many love you. And, and last year, I have to say, uh, at this event, I was chatting to um, not only Kernsey, but also Hico together as, as the people's mm. favourite. And now I think you, you've had to step up and take the people's favourite role. I'm not sure if that's a good thing <laughs> or a... a no, no we're, 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 look, we're just thrilled to, be, thrilled to be doing the race again. Yeah. And uh, win, lose or draw, I'm afraid to say you'll probably find us at the airport in the morning in a bad condition. No, no matter as long as we get the, no, As long as we get the boat, and in particular, as long as I get my crew of 13 uh, to Hobart, in, you know, we'll all have a few lumps and bruises, but as long as we get there in one piece, I'll, we'll, I'll be, be very happy. At least I know that I don't have to wait up for you to get in. I can just meet you in the airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just, uh, <laughs> you know us. We'll be, we'll, you'll, you'll hear us before you see us. <laughs> no, that, that's the way to go. Well, all the best and congratulations on last year's win, and I can't wait to see how you go this year in nine, a nine-boat fleet of TPs. Look, you know, you've got to be... Some of these TPs are so darn good. Look, if we... Look, we'd like to be in the first half of the TPs. Look, even getting a top three in the TPs, for us, you know, some of those boats are so well sailed. A lot of them are quite a bit newer than this boat. Yeah. So, look, even a top three in the TPs would be fantastic. Okay. Uh, that, that we... <laughs> we'll, we'll set that bar high for you. Top three in the TPs is still a high bar. We, 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 absolutely. We'd be, yeah. we, we'd be excited if we got a top three in the TPs. Yeah. Yeah. It's been awesome watching the Flinders Islet, Islet Race, Cabbage Tree. It's all been full on for you guys. Oh, look, again, the, um, the last race, uh, which was... What was the last race? Cabbage Tree? It was yeah. Thanks, Clinton. Um, they, well, I, 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 I happen to be in Burma on holidays with my wife, so I was, I was watching on AIS. Um, we'll put that aside for a moment. Uh, but as far as I could see, you know, the, the, there were three or four TPs finishing within a couple of minutes of each other. Yeah. And that's a long race. I mean, it's a 180 mile race. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the, the boats are still pretty much crossing tacks in the harbour on the way back. It's intense competition, but it's really, it's really good spirited competition, by the way. Definitely. And and, and I think that the sailors never lose sight of that 45 to sort of 60 foot boat range, even even a little bit smaller. They're the ones that we're really looking at to win IRC most of the time. When you look back through history, well, look, I think that's right. The the 100 footers, I mean, with the handicap they've got, 100 foot as as, as Wild Oats has done. Yeah. If they get a screaming northerly mm. and they get tucked into Hobart, and we we you know we then bash into the next southerly, yeah. of course a 100 footer can win. Yeah. But it would need to be a fairly unusual weather pattern. I mean, realistically, we'll all get hit by a southerly along the way somewhere. But the a year will come where the big boats get in before the southerly and a big boat will win both line on honours and IRC. I, to be quite honest, I hope that doesn't happen. Yeah. Let, let's let the big boats have line honours. No, they, they, they're good on them. I yeah. Look, I love watching the 100 footers as much as exactly. the sailing. I, look, I love watching them. Yeah. But I, I'd really, so 100 footer can win line honours, mm -hmm. but I, I'd really like to see, uh, you know, a, a smaller boat um, win, win, win the handicap. I think, I think it's better for sailing. Like when Hicko won the year before in I Wild know. Rose. You know, yeah, okay. Hicko. But, yeah, but, you know, it's such, such, a, it's such a, you know, such a great thing yeah. uh, when, when you do see, you know, the, the smaller boats doing well. And so if, any, if, any, if anyone, if any, well, we'd love to win it. Yeah. I don't, we, we need to be pretty lucky, bluntly. But <laughs> if we don't win it, uh, my vote, look, give, give it to one of the smaller amateur boats, please. Awesome. Please. But as, as someone who's really good at picking market outcomes, <laughs> who, who would you pick if you had to put, it, put oh. your money on? I mean, we're way out, but if you looked at last year's weather pattern, Look, I, I think what you'd have to say is that you, you've got to keep doing, you've got to be sensible about this. It's interesting, the three TPs that, that survived the storm last year, yeah. they were the three P's, including us, who'd done all of the Blue Water series. Yeah. You, basically, if you're going to break stuff, break it before break Hobart. It so, yeah, break it up. So for mine, you look, you, you, you really, yeah. for me, no, I, I RKO with Gavin Brady on board, that sort of stuff. You know, these, these, there's all sorts of super boats out there. Uh, for me, if I had to put money on anyone, I'm not much of a gambling person, but look, China, Chinese whisper. Yeah.
you know, because why would I say that? Last year she led the Blue Water point score into Hobart. The only reason we beat her was we got an, a bonus point for winning Hobart. So we beat we beat Chinese Whisper by one point over six races. Once again this year, who's leading the Blue Water series? Chinese Whisper. So yeah, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to go past a, a well sailed great boat. So if I had to if I had to spend twenty bucks on a boat, uh, for me, I'd go Chinese Whisper. It's much more fun than the Melbourne Cup, I reckon. <laughs> well, well what, I'm re what I'm really ticked off about is like last year I think we were 21 to 1, yeah. and I think just about everyone on my crew had a bet on us but me. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Well, all these people coming up saying, you know, put a put, you know, put, 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 put hundred bucks and... So maybe we shouldn't listen to you about Chinese Whisper if you're not good at picking it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. Awesome. Well, good luck this Thank year you. to you and the whole... We'll see you in Hobart. Yeah, or the airport. Oh, or the airport. <laughs> Perfect. Rico, here we go again. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, Christmas time, I can't believe it. But anyway, looking forward to it. It feels like yesterday I was standing with you basically on this same spot waiting for last year's Hobart. But I'm, I know that this whole year has changed the Wild Oats program significantly. Yeah, look, it has. It's been a good year for us. I mean, obviously it was tough last year, but you know, we've learned a hell of a lot about the boat. We've done several thousand miles in the boat this year and um, Hamilton on race week, and it's all great preparation. And uh, we're just doing a few tweaks to the boat again um, before next week. And then, yeah, looking forward to getting out there. It's really exciting. So nice to see you out in the boat again finally for the big boat race as well. Are you doing the big boat yeah, race? Yeah, absolutely. We would miss that for the world. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And um, yeah, it sort of stops a lot of the waterfront banter, so it's <laughs> kind, of, kind of good. But uh, no, look, the boat's really exciting. The changes we've done this year have, I think, been a big improvement. Cutting the DSS board out, you know, it's a 500 kilo saving for us, which is a big deal. So um, uh, a lot of just nice tweaks, which all you know, add up to boat speed for us. So it's... Um, Still comes down to doing a good job in the day, though. Yeah, exactly. And and we saw that last year. I think you you even though you weren't maybe as prepared as you would have liked to be, you still put so much time and effort in. And sometimes it just doesn't all add up. Yeah, look, you can't. I mean, you can't explain to the average person how much effort goes into these programs. Yeah. You know, it's massive. Um, you know, just hundreds of hours of preparation, oh. sail, handling, and I mean, it's crazy. These these things just chew up time. But um. This year's been good, and the vibe's good. And generally, when the vibe's good for us, you know, you're in a much better place. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, and you're in a really cool place because you're able to learn off Comanche last year. You've learned off Scallywag this year. We know that CQS is going to jump on the block, and I'm sure that you'll learn a few more things off them in the, in the lead up as well. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure we will. <laughs> but um, you know, it's exciting. It adds colour. It adds colour to the sport. That's for yeah, sure. No, definitely. Well, it's nice to see you. Looking forward to seeing you out on the harbour, and and it'll be great to see um, another Oatley on board too. Yeah, no, that's exciting. Really looking forward to having down on board. We've spoken about it for years mm. and it just hasn't happened for whatever reason but um, you know, we're taking him this year in Bob's honour and um, he's really looking forward to it so it'll be good. That's really nice. Honouring um, lots of people this year. Uh, last year I have to say just after I interviewed you I interviewed um, Kernsey and, and Hicko together yeah. and it's a very different dynamic this year. I'm missing him every second I have to say. Yeah look it's, it was really sad and very sudden you know but it's, um, it's just part of life you know you just got to make the most of it. You know we lost a good friend yesterday to depression and stuff and um, yeah so it's a tough world you know people really need to make the most of it and uh, thank the lucky stars that we've got the life we've got. Yeah it brings us all in all back into perspective and, and um, I guess that makes the start on Boxing Day all the more worthwhile. Yeah absolutely you know, looking forward to it. Excellent lovely to see you Rico. You too Nick. See ya.